Glenn, tell us the latest on your injury situation. Um, it's not too bad. I'm over the worst if it had a little uh, in a, t a tear in the muscle called a soleus or something, a little muscle behind the, the calf muscle. So, uh, But it's nothing major, so I should be fine. How frustrating have the injury problems been for you this season? It's the worst thing that can happen to a football player. You know, The last thing you want to be doing is uh, bed bound or sat on the sofa because you're injured and can't play. But, but yeah, obviously I've had... Uh, well, like I said before, many uh, more injuries this season than I've had in my career. So obviously it's a kickback, but hopefully we're over the worst of it now. Fabio's had a few injury problems going into the World Cup, so uh, you can assure him that you will be fit. I will be fit, yeah. <laughs> I don't feel like I've played a full season, so because obviously I, I clearly haven't. But but no, I think I've only played about for, about thirty games, so. Yeah, I, feel, I do feel fresh. The season, maybe on a club level, hasn't gone exactly as you'd like. How important is it for you personally that you get the World Cup at the end of it to maybe make up for what's happened for your club? Well, obviously, I had a very disappointing season um, at club level, but yeah, obviously, if we can if we can do something, uh, achieve something good in the World Cup, then it could turn uh, the season into a into a, um, a good season. A few people are talking about Gary Neville as a late contender. What do you make of what he's doing over at Old Trafford? Everybody knows Gary Neville. He's obviously a fantastic professional and and he's played fantastic for whoever he's played for, whenever he's played, you know. So, yeah, he's obviously a fantastic player and a good good professional. I've never thought about people challenging me or or nothing like that, to be honest. I've, I just get on with my job and let everybody else talk about it, to be honest. And you did make the position your own during the qualifiers. Do you feel like it's yours to lose now? Well, I'd have to say yes, because obviously I've played the last um, last few games or whatever and and put a little run together. But but no, I, I don't I don't take anything for granted and I don't expect to put the shirt on. Obviously, I, I know I've got to work hard and, and keep trying to do what I'm doing and, and keep the shirt. What's Fabio Capello like as a manager? I mean, he's got a fantastic reputation. What's it like in the dressing room with him? Like you said, he's got a fantastic reputation. He's a nice man and obviously a fantastic manager. Um, obviously, he's he's strict with the lads when he needs to be. But I think I think well, me and the lads think that's a good thing. It's it's what you need, and he lets you know when you need to knuckle down and do the work, and he lets you also know when you can let your air down a little bit. And he's not the only high-profile manager you've worked with. You've worked with Rafa, Harry, Mourinho. How does Capello compare to them? I think it's difficult to compare any manager, to be honest. Every every man's different and they've got their own way of uh, doing certain things and obviously they think differently and they have their own, uh, like I say, their own training regimes and stuff like that. So it'd be difficult to compare them. But for me, I think I think he's one of the best I've worked with, definitely. From an England point of view, if Fernando Torres, for example, didn't play in the World Cup, if his injury prevented him, it'd be excellent. How would you feel about that as a as a teammate? Well, obviously, on a personal level, I, I hope he's fit and uh, and he plays. But I hope he doesn't like you know jeopardise anything we're trying to do. But but no, obviously, I wish him well and I hope he is fit. But I understand what you're saying. That it, it'd be nice that Spain would be a weaker team without him. Put it that way. 1966. Everyone always says, "Oh, West Ham won the World Cup." You've got so many people who come through the West Ham Academy like yourself in this England squad. Can they do it again in a way? I hope so, mate. Yeah, I, I know. Obviously, the the academy at West Ham is obviously it's it's known for bringing through good players, and and like you say, I think there's about six, maybe seven of the current squad that come through that academy. So they're obviously doing something right. But it'd be nice to say that uh, we won the World Cup after. That's that'd be sure. Final question, Glenn. You mentioned if you won the World Cup, you'd give your medal to your mum before. Tell us about the influence she's had on, on your life. When I got trials for West Ham, obviously I could, my mum couldn't drive. So um, she was working, uh, got another job. So she's working up two jobs so she could afford to get herself driving lessons and pass a test to take me over there. Like say four nights of a week she give up just to just for me to go training. And that was from, from 10 years old till I was old enough to drive. So... So when you put on the shirt for the first time in a World Cup, partly doing it for her? Yeah, definitely. Definitely.